when we talk about this growth and organization life cycle in this particular session, we will be discussing about the organization size uh, is uh, bigger, better or pressure for the growth uh, than the greener growth model, than the Churchill and the Slavis growth model, then the dilemmas of the organization size, organizational life cycle, organization life cycle uh, uh, model uh, and then the as usual the case study, research paper, book recommendations and the references. Now, actually the whenever we are talking about the businesses, so business it comes in our mind is very large size is there and uh, especially in the case of these manufacturing organizations, uh, I would like to talk about the era of 1960 onwards uh, to the 1990. So, therefore, the, the most of these uh, the businesses uh, uh, were by this the manufacturing uh, era uh, and uh, later on the service uh, era has started uh, which is uh, which are having the small uh, organization sizes there. So, question of the big versus small begins with the notion of uh, growth uh, and the reason so many organizations fail and uh, the need to grow large is there. And uh, when we talk about the expansion of the business then in our minds it comes to the large organizations. When we talk about the organization structures uh, or the uh, organization, then the organization feel that they should be the slim. So, business is to be large and organization is to be slim. So, therefore, when we talk about the pressures for the growth, uh, so recent uh, economic woes and the layoffs uh, at uh, many large firms uh, have spurred building the entrepreneurs to take a chance on the uh, starting their own company or growing it alone in a sole uh, uh, proprietorship. Uh, um, so, uh, currently in India also as I mentioned earlier that is the now the concept of having their own organization or the budding entrepreneurs uh, they want to take the chance as the uh, ecosystem of the government of India is to support uh, this type of these budding entrepreneurs. So, yet uh, despite this uh, proliferation of the news, the small organizations, the giants such as the Procter & Gamble, uh, General Electric, Toyota, Walmart, uh, global organizations have continued to grow. For the example, Walmart's employees base is almost uh, uh, as big as the population of the city of the Houston. Texas. So, the, the combined square footage of the uh, home depots retail stores is about the same as the 92,564 average size uh, US homes. So, uh, this uh, the very zones uh, liberal uh, optic cable for its uh, internet uh, network uh, would reach around the world's uh, 18 times. So, whenever we are talking about this uh, the companies in these uh, uh, all uh, industries uh, in from the retail to the aerospace uh, to media strive for growth to acquire the size and resources needed to compete on a global scale. Uh, to invest in these new technology and to control the distribution channels and the guarantees access to the markets, uh, there are a number of the other pressures for the organization to grow. Many executives have found that the firms must grow to stay economically healthy, to stop the growing is to stagnate uh, and to be stable means that the customers may not have uh, their the demands uh, fully met or that competitors uh, will, will increase market share at the expense of your company. So, at Walmart uh, managers have a view to continue and emphasis on uh, growth even though it means uh, uh, the decreasing return on investment uh, and they are uh, uh, in garland with the idea that to stop the growing is to stagnate and die. So, when we talk about this uh, the greener growth model. So, greener presents five phases of the growth uh, uh, interspersed by the periods of the revolution. So, each phase results from the previous one and the causes the next one is there. So, it is sequential. So, first and foremost uh, it, it goes with the uh, that is the organizational uh, leadership is important. So, whenever we are talking about uh, this leadership cost, so this leadership cost uh, is uh, by the leadership crisis. So, here it becomes very important uh, that is the whenever we are talking about uh, uh, this leadership cost uh, uh, then in that case uh, it is becoming that is the uh, how we are going for this particular aspects. So, here uh, the in spite of uh, this the leadership crisis uh, then it is going for the autonomic crisis is there. So, 
uh, as a period, the period of time, uh, the organizations, uh, uh, they, when this uh, autonomic crisis uh, starts, uh, so naturally the control in the organization that also gets affected. And as a result of which, uh, as we grow with the period of time, then the red tape crisis uh, that also makes this organization that is the uh, bureaucratic system in which the rules, regulations uh, and uh, uh, the procedures, they are dominating and they, they become the challenge for the organization. So, as a result, the growth crisis arises. So, uh, in fact, uh, uh, according to the Greener's uh, growth model, we find that is it starts with the leadership crisis and when uh, the naturally with the leadership crisis starts, the organizations, the growth crisis uh, for the size that also starts. Uh, so, which ultimately leads to the uh, declining of this organization or to the end of the organization. So, Larry A. Greener based his growth model on the age and size of the organization premise that organizational practices that change over time and that management problems and principles are rooted in time. He based his theory on the European psychologist uh, who hold that past events and experience shape our behavior. So, Greener showed that the leaders hold on to the obsolete structure to consolidate their power. So, instead of uh, looking inward to the develop the organization, uh, they focus exclusively on the external forces and the consequent stagnation leads to the evolutionary phases and that shake up uh, the organization. And the resolution of this uh, revolution decides whether the company will move forward or it will decline. So, market uh, for forces determine the duration of the evolutionary and revolutionary places of the organization's life cycle. So, first and foremost, uh, it goes with the solution to the creativity. So, in the creativity stage, the organization creates a product and a market and the leadership is the entrepreneur and visionary and reacting to the market and the lack of structure and management creates a leadership crisis. So, if uh, one entrepreneurs are the savvy enough to engage a skilled business management, a structure begins to form with the systems, uh, work standards and a hierarchy a reporting structure. So, a crisis of autonomy occurs uh, when the decision making is too centralized to be the effective. Organizations try to adopt with the delegation, but if the organization uh, is not ready, the talent will leave. Successfully, delegation allows companies uh, to expand, but often results in the autonomous managers uh, with a uh, parochial attitude and uh, creating a silo effect uh, resulting in a, a crisis of this uh, uh, control. So, in coordination, successful reaction to the control crisis is formal systems for the planning, control and the resource management. Eventually, a divide grows between the bed quarters and the field uh, managers and the red tape crisis results from this organization becoming the too large and complex to operate under the formal and the rigid system is there. So, whenever we are talking about uh, uh, this type of the coordination, so you know, it is required the collaboration that is a phase 5. So, if the organization uh, survives the fourth revolution, red tape is uh, supplanted by the collaboration, social control and the self discipline. So, Greener correctly predicted that the phase 5 would create a crisis in the psychological situation of the emotionally and physically exhausted employees uh, uh, breaking under the burden of the uh, excessive teamwork and the pressure to innovate. The result of this revolutionary phase is a company is now focus on these employee well-being, rest and revitalization. So, is ready well uh, underway with a different uh, social con uh, contract between the organization and its employees as leaders understand that people are the organizations. The another model which talks about the, uh, these uh, uh, the systems uh, and these uh, stages of the small business growth is about the Churchill and Levin growth model. In 1993, Niels C. Churchill and the Virginia L. Lewis uh, uh, examined the life cycle of the small businesses and they started with the concepts uh, from the uh, Greener and the work of the Lawrence uh, uh, as, uh, uh, as inmates uh, uh, who studied the stages of the small business growth. So, among the other factors, uh, uh, the Churchill and Lewis are the dissatisfied with the previous research uh, that ignored the early stages of the growth and inappropriately used uh, only size and maturity as the dimensions. 
So, their model evaluates the size, diversity, complexity and the five management factors, management style, structure, system, strategic goals and the owner involvement in the business. So, Churchill and the Levis defined the five stages of the small business growth are there. Now, I would like to explain these characteristics of the small business each stage of the development is there. So, they here we find the five stages are existence, survival, success designment, success growth, take off and resource maturity is there. And uh, when we talk about the existence is there, so in the organization we will find that there is a direct supervision is there. So, here you find that is uh, it is giving you the direct supervision. Now, whenever we are talking about uh, this particular uh, the direct supervision, then it is going to be the extent of the formal systems. So, in the case of the formal systems, uh, we find out uh, that is the we have to uh, identify that is the how this particular system of uh, this uh, extent of formal system which can be minimal to the non-existence. And when you are going for this the non-existence, then it will be making you that is a major strategy of the existence is there. And as a result of which the business and owner, uh, they will be working on it, right. So, here they, uh, however, as from this uh, small circle, you can represent the owner's uh, larger circle represents the business is there. So, when there is a direct supervision is there, uh, then uh, the organization is already into the existence is there. But now, the survival starts uh, and here it is the how to become the survival and there is a supervised supervision is there. And here you find that this is organization structure and it is becoming this type of the structure is there. So, here of the small business as they serve us, uh, they start supervision and the formal system will be the as minimum as much as possible and the survival will be the strategy. And here you find that that is the, uh, the owner that becomes uh, uh, the bigger than the before. Uh, now, the success uh, disengagement is there and that is a functional. And in this functional, you will find this is the organization structure. And here in this organization structure, the exchange of formal systems will be the basic one. And this is maintaining the profitable status quo. Uh, in this case, uh, we will find out uh, uh, that is this uh, status quo uh, that, that, that is creating uh, this business and the owner and uh, the positions into the separating is there because there, there is a disengagement is there. Now, the success growth is there and in the success growth organization structure will remain the same and then because that is created a particular aspect uh, from the functional it has become the uh, this uh, also the same functional remaining the functional because that is going to be the success growth. And uh, this is making this uh, formal system is developing and the major strategy will be get resources for the growth. And uh, this divisional uh, uh, stage 4 will be the takeoff system will be there and now you are going into the towards the maturity stage and therefore, this is a maturing and the growth is there. So, resources systems this your system is getting maturity and the owner is getting separate apart. And now, the resource maturity stage will come. And in this research maturity stage, you will find that is the formal system is highly extensive is there. And you see here the control management, control management has also changed and the business in owner. So, therefore, uh, the owner uh, that, that he becomes the separate from the existing system is there. So, according to this model, when we, we go from the existence to the resource maturity, then we find out that is the first uh, the small businesses, uh, they strive for the survival is there and as they grow, then they are going for the divisional and then line and stuff functions are there. So, at the existing stage, uh, the owner's goal is to get the enough customers and deliver the products or services to keep the doors open. And the owner does everything from supervising staff to supplying the capital. And the goal is to remain in existence without depleting the capital. The survival, if the business survives to become a sustainable entity, it shifts to the survival and the goal is to break even and the remain viable. And if they can move beyond this uh, stage, uh, they, they sell or they, they close. 
Now here uh, in the success stage, uh, uh, the goal is to achieve economic health where the owner can choose to remain in this particular stage and possibly use it as a uh, platform for the growth uh, that is the sub stage th uh, 3G. So, are the uh, disengagement that is uh, uh, stage 3D, uh, higher management and use it is as an income source. So, now, in the stage 5, when the takeoff is uh, now the question arises, the primary problem is how to finance and other uh, rapid growth. Issues are delegation to competent management and generating cash for the growth. If the takeoff does not happen, it reverts to an earlier stage or the fails are there. In the stage 5, it becomes the resource maturity and at the maturity, the business has the financial resources to thrive on the right people, effective systems and the functional competency and the goal is to remain viable and they avoid the future problems. Now, this dilemma of our organizational size as we have seen the large, large enterprises, we have seen the small uh, organizational growth, uh, the organizations feel compelled to grow how much and how large. So, what size organization is better poised to compete a, a fast changing the global environment? And here both are uh, here uh, has been shown that is the large organizations economic of the scales they are having the global reach and the vertical uh, hierarchy mechanistic complex stable market and the organization main is there. While when it is a small, so responsive, flexible, uh, regional rich, uh, uh, flat structure, organic simple, uh, niche finding and the entrepreneurs are there. So, huge resources and economies of the scales are needed for many organizations to compete globally. Only large organizations can build a massive pipeline in Alaska. Only a large corporation like General Electric can afford to build the uh, ultra efficient dollar 2 million wind turbines that contains 8000 different parts. Large organizations also are able to get back to the business more quickly following a disaster giving the employees a sense of security and the belonging uh, during an uncertain time. So, large companies are the under, uh, they are standardized uh, and offer mechanistically and they run and complex and the complexity offers the hundreds of the functional specialists uh, within the organization to perform multifaceted tasks and to produce the varied and complicated products. These dilemmas of the organizational size moreover the large organizations when established uh, can be a presence uh, that stabilizes a market for years. So, managers can join the company and expect a career uh, reminiscent uh, of these uh, the, you know, organizational men of the 1950s and the 1960s. The organizations can provide longevity rises and problems. The small organizations in competing argument, uh, the, the small is beautiful because the crucial requirements for the success in a global economy are the responsiveness and the flexibility. So, in a fast changing markets are there. Small scale can provide the significant advantages in terms of the quick reaction to the uh, changing customer needs or the shifting environment and the market conditions. In addition, small organizations often enjoy greater employee commitment because it is easier for people to fill the part of a community. So, employees typically work on a variety of tasks rather than the narrow specialized jobs. So, for many people working in a small company is more exciting and fulfilling than the working in a huge organization. When we are talking about the dilemmas of the organizational size, the big company versus small companies, then it becomes the hybrid. The paradox is that that is the advantages of the small companies sometimes enable them into success and they have grow large small companies can become uh, the victims of their own success as they grow. So, shifting is a mechanistic structure emphasizing vertical hierarchy and, uh, and the spanning the organization men uh, rather than the entrepreneurs uh, that is uh, joint companies are built for the optimization and not for innovation. So, big companies become the committed to their existing products and technologies and they have a hard time supporting the innovation for the future. The solution is what the uh, Jack Welch retired chairman and CEO of General Electric called the big company versus a small company hybrid. 
and that combines a large corporation's resources and rich with a small company simplicity and the flexibility. Uh, full service global firms need a strong resource uh, um, base and this uh, sufficient complexity and hierarchy to serve the clients around the world. Uh, size is not necessarily in, uh, at odds with the speed and flexibility, but the managers must find ways to encourage the innovation and adopt quickly. So, organizational life cycle, the concept of organization suggests that organizations are born, grow older and eventually die. So, organization structure, leadership style and, and uh, the administrative systems follow a fairly predictable uh, pattern through stages on the life cycle. So, stages are sequential and they follow a natural progression. Uh, the concept provides is usual way to think about the organizational growth and the changes there. So, in the case of these entrepreneur stage, uh, the, when an organization is born, emphasis is on creating the product or the service and surviving in the marketplace. The founders devote their full energies to the technical surviving in the marketplace. So, here is activities of the, the production and marketing. So, organization is informal and the non-bureaucratic. So, control is based on the owner's personal supervision. As the organization starts to grow, the larger number of the employees causes problems. For example, Jimmy Wells and the Larry Sanger co-founded Wikipedia in 2001 and they personally provided oversight of the project during the uh, early years with the Wells acting as visionary leader and the Sanger focused primarily in developing the new service. This collective stage, uh, uh, if the leadership crisis from the entrepreneurial stage is resolved, the organization uh, begins to develop the career goals and the directions. So, employees identity with the mission of the organization and they spent long hours uh, working for, uh, um, uh, the, for each members feel part of a, a collective organization. A few formal systems begin to appear for communication and the control. An autonomy crisis might occur when the top managers do not want to give up uh, the responsibility. The organization needs to the find mechanisms to control and the coordination departments uh, without direct uh, supervision from top. For example, 23 year old founder uh, Mark Zuckerberg knows his company has to grow up at internet speed. So, he recruited a top Google executive uh, Sherry Sandberg as a chief operating officer is there. This formalization of stage in, involves the installation and use of the rules, procedures and the control systems. So, communication is less frequent and the more format. The top management because the more concern issues such as the strategy and the planning and leaves the operations of the firm to middle management. At the point in the organization's development, uh, the growth of the systems and the programs very begin to strangle middle level executives. The organization seems uh, bureaucratic and too large and the complex to be the uh, managed through the formal programs are there. Now, here when we a bureaucracy uh, is uh, reach its the limit, a new sense of the innovation and collaboration in the solution to the red tape crisis. Throughout the organization, managers develop skills for the confronting the problems and the working together. Social control and the self-discipline uh, reduce the need for the additional formal controls. So, formal systems may be simplified and replaced with the managers teams in the task forces. The organization may also be split into the multiple divisions to maintain a small company philosophy. All mature organizations have to go through the periods of the revitalization or they will die. A need for these uh, renewal for may be occur uh, that is uh, every 10 to 20 years are there. So, when we are talking about a different stages of organizational life cycles, uh, so it goes from the as we discussed uh, in the previous slides that is the entrepreneurial stage collectivity stage, formalization stage and the elaboration stage is there. So, organization stages of development uh, when they are into the small size are there. So, creativity and the crisis need for leadership is becoming the very important. And this provision of the clear direction that giving the crisis need for the delegation with the control and the addition of the internal systems uh, that will be making the need to deal with the too much uh, uh, red tape will be there. When there is a too much red tapeism is there then there is a need for the revitalization development of the teamwork is required and which will a, a result into the uh, streamlining the small company thinking, continued maturity and the decline is there. So, every organization life cycle is having the startup or the embryonic stage uh, growth, maturity and the decline is there. 
So, the organization life cycle models propose that there are the four phases is in organization's uh, existence, um, birth, growth, maturity and the decline. Each phase is characterized by the specific factor which influence organizational performance at that time helping develop the appropriate strategy for dealing with the each situation effectively. The phases will be considered in the more detail including the management challenges uh, faced during the each stage and strategies by the moving forward. So, these are the startup planning is there and planning for an organization uh, means uh, the determining what type of the activity will engage in and how it will grow. The growth is the generally the represents the period uh, when uh, uh, an organization becomes the most stable and increase its size and number of the employees are there. Now, the maturity includes a stable workforce uh, with the uh, good working uh, relationships uh, among the employees and the declining is the characterized by an uh, aging workforce, uh, fewer customers and the shrinking profits or losses are there. Now, this is a case study the halogen analytics uh, which is talking about uh, using the design engineering organizations uh, and it provides a highly efficient way and the, how the problems are there. And this problem is there to come out with an international strategies uh, and promises uh, are there by the organization and if uh, this focus uh, on the United States and they start out a global player is there. Now, here although the ME tends to uh, agree that the halogen for the time being should uh, stay focused on building their its business in the United States, uh, Alex has come to believe that the global expansion of some type is necessary. This uh, case study will be help you to understand that is the whenever a small organization or startup when it is going towards the becoming the large organization and as I mentioned there that is the solution will be that is the hybrid organization that you can explore that is uh, whether it will work or it will not work. Here in this case study you will also find out that is the how the, the, the decision making process for the global expansion whether they should go for there for this particular or they, uh, they have to continue uh, with the same size of the organization is there. I am sure that is uh, you will be able to answer uh, these questions that is the what are the arguments for the uh, halogen analytics going international and what are the arguments uh, for these uh, halogen staying focused on the US market. Uh, which of the three international strategy options uh, uh, did open its own offices, take on the foreign partners, licenses, its products, would you recommend and uh, explain why. This is the research paper organizational life cycle and performance uh, among the SMEs are there and uh, this paper explores uh, to bridge a gap in the literature by exploring the life cycle strategy relationship to discover the preferred strategy for the higher and uh, low performing firms and the four of the five stages of the organization life cycles are there. So, here this particular partial uh, uh, implication will be the life cycle and performance research uh, that provides managers with the snapshot of the high and low performing firms and an understanding of how their situation, decision making style, strategy and the structure uh, fit the high performance focus on these uh, uh, the practices and uh, they find out the first mover strategies. So, uh, the original life cycle is uh, operational demonstrating the characteristics for the high and low performing firm in the each stage that is the except the declinings there. This is the book uh, titled the organizational life cycle a, a complete guide 2020 edition and the author is the Gerardus uh, uh, Block Dick. Uh, I am sure that when you will go through this book you will be able to understand that is the how uh, do I reduce the effort in the organization life cycle work to be the done to get the problems uh, uh, solved. How can I ensure and that is the plans of the actions includes every organizational life cycle task uh, and that every organizational life cycle outcomes is in place. How will I save on the time investigating strategic and the tactical options and ensuring organizational life cycle they are cost are lower or uh, high. So, therefore, in that case you will find out uh, with the help of this research paper uh, how you can go uh, with the, uh, the life cycles um, uh, with the decision making process with the life cycle of the organization. These are the references and these references will help you to go into the detail for further studies uh, to understand that is uh, how organizational life cycle and the size of the organizations uh, that matters. Thank you.